Zora Neale Hurston, author of Their Eyes Are Watching God, is a prime example of a strong woman. As a beautiful and charismatic woman, she carried herself with pride. She was often criticized by her peers for her lack of racial awareness. She grew up in an all-black town where her father was the mayor and pastor. As a matter of fact, Eatonville is the name of her town and it was one of the first all-black established towns. Growing up there, she felt no shame for her blackness and only celebrated her womanhood. She embraced the good and the bad of her gender and her race and saw the beauty in everything. Zora exuded grace and strength and sometimes found herself as the focus of criticism for it. She did not let anyone step on her and she lived for herself. Her writings were expressions of her brilliant imagination and passion for life and knowledge. Florence Mill, known as the Queen of Happiness, was an American cabaret singer, dancer, and comedian. She was a daughter of former enslaved parents, and she was well known for her stage presence, her delicate voice, and her wide-eyed beauty. Mills famously sang the theme song for the show Blackbirds, I'm a little blackbird looking for a bluebird. When she died suddenly in 1926, her funeral was one of the most spectacular. Over 5,000 people packed the Mother Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church and 100,000 more lined the streets. As the funeral procession moved down 145th Street, a low-flying airplane released a flock of blackbirds. She was still a young woman at the height of her fame and critics held her artistry for many years after her death. Mills hoped that the work that she did throughout her life would work on behalf of spreading racial understanding. Josephine Baker is considered an important figure in spreading the culture created in the jazz age to Europe as jazz was meant to break away from the art of Western Europe. In her own way, she promoted civil rights movements. She would refuse to perform anywhere that discrimination prevented blacks from sitting with whites. Miss Baker didn't have any children, so she adopted 12 children from different parts of the world and called them the Rainbow Tribe. She did this to show everyone that children of different races can come together and live in peace. And so, other people of different cultures should find a way to live together. Gladys Bentley was a female African American performer during the jazz age. A 300 pound alpha singer, she used to dress in a white tux and top hat. She was openly homosexual. Ma Rainey was also a lesbian and she was a blues singer. Several, on several occasions, she found herself in trouble with the police for her lesbian behavior. In 1925, she was arrested for taking part in an orgy at home involving women in her court. The Jazz Age not only marked development of art, but it also marked social changes and sexual ambiguity. While most people consider the 60s to be the most impactful point for feminism, these women of the 20s had already begun to push the boundaries of society, and for no particular reason than it was their desire to do so. A concept that has echoed throughout the semester has been that of agency. These women best exemplify what it means to take agency and to act. After doing this research and learning about these proud, beautiful women, it's hard for me to look at our culture today. In the 1920s, women were supposed to be at home. That's was the traditional role. And these women did not play by those rules. They did not focus on patriarchal society. In their youth and in their the height of their lives, they pushed boundaries just for the sole reason of pushing them. And then you look in today's media and you see women portrayed as animals, creatures to be tamed, to be controlled, to be 
forced to submit. Even Shakira in her video, she will. She's supposed to represent something animalistic. And although it's supposed to be meant in a way that's beautiful, it's sexualized for men to see a woman in a cage. Or that women just desire to have sex with men. I don't know if I can speak for all women, but personally, I'm not looking to be with every single man I meet in any kind of intimate way. So why is it that these ads seem to be giving this idea that all women just want to get laid? That they just want to be mounted? That they want to be controlled? Because in 1920s, for those women, it did not represent that. So why, in our age, when it's supposed to be so open-minded, are we still being shown these images of women being put down by their own sexuality. I say celebrate and embrace your sexuality, your womanhood, but you should not have to be exploited for it. Thank you.